Reverend Axon Banda, and your entire executive of our reformed church in Zambia. Let me also acknowledge the presence of the leadership of the Dutch Reformed Church. I am aware that we have colleagues from South Africa, including the one who gave a wonderful message, the Word of God, but I also understand we may have some from DRC. So we recognize you here. The Presbyterian moderators that are present here, you are well recognized. The General Secretary of the Council of Churches in Zambia, Father Chikoya, we recognize you, sir. The Chairperson of the 125 Years Celebrations Organizing Committee, Reverend Jonathan Zulu, and your committee, we recognize you, and you've done a wonderful job to organize today's event, which I am told is not only happening here in Lusaka, but also in Eastern Province and other parts of the country. Congratulations. Let me recognize my cabinet colleagues, colleagues in the cabinet, colleagues, provincial ministers, but also to recognize, surely and really, Secretary of the Cabinet, Mr. Kangwa, representing all public sector workers, central government, and local government. We recognize you. Let me recognize the clergy from the whole board of Christ, the clergy from all the churches, not just the Reformed Church in Zambia, but all the churches in this our Christian country. You are recognized. Invited guests within the church, other churches, the country, and outside, and indeed, if there are any cooperating partners. My colleagues in the UPND and the Alliance partners, and indeed other political parties in this our democratic nation, constitutional democracy, I mean. I must also acknowledge all the media colleagues that are here who are doing a good job, without whom even some compounds of Lusaka wouldn't know what is happening here at the showgrounds today. The nation is aware of what's going on here, 125 years of existence of the RSZ in Zambia and the country, beyond the country, beyond Lusaka, Africa and the world are aware of this event, only possible through you, the media. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I must express my sincere gratitude to you, the moderator, Reverend Axon Banda, and your team for taking a decision to invite this fellow speaking here to be part of these great celebrations, 125 years of existence in our country, Reformed Church of Zambia, starting under a tree, as Reverend Banda was explaining to me in the room upstairs there, how the church started under a tree. 1899, and leading the church, those that came before you, Reverend Banda, those that came before you, the teams that have managed this church for all these years, is not easy. Coming to you and your team, evangelizing, teaching our citizens how to be good Christians, teaching our children, as I have seen 
from the guard of honor that was mounted here. This education that you have given, the discipline, the sense of respect, love, and indeed collegiate relationship. Reverend Axon Banda, the leaders before you, thank you very much and congratulations. I'm aware that some people take leadership, the skills that leaders bring to communities, to our churches, for granted. I don't take it for granted. I know how difficult it is. I know how challenging it is to lead people. Yes, in politics now, but in the family, in the communities, in the businesses, in the churches. It requires a lot of patience, big heart. And Reverend Axon Band and your team, the Reformed Church in Zambia, the Dutch Reformed Church, Father Chikoya, the Christian family. You're doing a good job collectively. Thank you once more. Thank you once more. We should never take this for granted because when leadership is not there, God's people perish. We know it. So thank you once more. Let me also acknowledge that those leaders that came before you, who did not just do evangelical work, but helped to set up schools, helped to set up colleges, just Omari, for example, helped to set up health facilities, ran them under difficult times, challenging financial conditions, saving our people in need, in education, as I said, in health. Having visited Nyanje Hospital, for example, Levin Goma and I visited Nyanje Hospital around 207, my first time to visit Nyanje Hospital. And walking in that hospital, Reverend Banda, talking to mothers, and one of the mothers who had delivered a night before our visit was a woman from across the border from Mozambique. So you have not just been saving the needs of Zambians, you have been saving as a church the needs of Mozambicans as well. Wonderful, and thank you so much. I really think you have said things that I would have indicated I will have illustrated, but you covered them so well, and you made an ask. I always listen when I'm in a gathering like this or any other traditional ceremony, any meeting, I'm listening carefully, and I listen to your wonderful delivery and that of the Dutch Reformed Church colleague who spoke before you. In your message, Reverend Banda, you talked about working together and that we are not in competition. I mean the government and the church. You are so right. We are partners. Many times people, organizations front competition. When they see images, they front and interpret images of competition. Over years, I have learned that flip the coin, look at the positive side, look at complementarity, look at the partnership, you will achieve more together. Your government will work with you and other churches to deliver services to the people of Zambia. After all, even this government, our members, the cabinet, this fellow speaking here, public sector workers, are members 
of the Reformed Church of Zambia, are members of the New Apostolic Church, are members of, if you like, the Catholic Church, the SDA Church, Evangelicals, all of them, without exception, we are members of the Board of Christ. So how can we be different? Because we are now ministers, we are permanent secretaries, we are presidents. We cannot be different. We are members of the same society. So you are sure that we will work together in the different endeavors that the church is involved in. That is our confirmation. That is our confirmation. We will also respond effectively in particular education. As you know, this government is offering free education and you are educating our children in those great schools. I want to confess, Reverend Banda, that I'm one of the parents who have benefited from one of your schools. I say parents because I took over a blind young child from Mfue area when he was still in grade five, grade six, a blind child, Shadrach Zulu, and sponsored him into school. And eventually, Shadrach went to Magueru School for the Blind, and he graduated. I attended the graduation ceremony. He is now a teacher. I'm a proud person that I've been able to benefit from. I must repeat, I'm a very proud person, together with Shadrach's mother and other family members, who I now call my family members, that the Magueru School for the Blind was able to first accept Shadrach, educate him to the point where Shadrach is a teacher. He is teaching very soon. He will be leaving for further studies under our family sponsorship, not the government, but we as family of HH. How proud can we be more than what you have done? And I know you are doing this to many other children in need, those with different abilities, so we call them, differently abled. Who else can do this other than the church? Thank you so much. So, we confirm our partnership in education, in health, in other community works that you are doing, uh, Reverend Banda, and your team, and the Dutch Reformed Church. I must also indicate and encourage other churches to continue supporting education, health, and indeed other areas for the differently abled, for the disadvantaged, for the children, for the old, and for the whole society in our country. I also want to acknowledge your strong message that the RCZ, the RCZ understands its obligation to society, serving society. We as a government who work with you in that area. Specifically, you are celebrating 125 years and as a country, 60 years of independence, but we are afflicted by the West drought in living memory. And in the small room upstairs, I did indicate to you that we should continue to work together in the drought mitigation measures. We should fight this drought. We should provide support. Two areas, I must say, one, support to feed our people in the 84 districts that have been afflicted by the drought. And I did explain to you that we are most food insecure because the drought areas are largely the farming areas of our country. The eastern province, where the church started from, the southern province, Lusaka province, central province, and parts of the copper belt, the most productive parts of this country. Of course, western province is affected, but I'm talking of the farming areas which were affected and hence the negative effect in terms of the drought. And what we want to do, working with your church and other churches, our churches, is to support feeding people 
who are afflicted by this anger, number one. Number two, to increase the resilience. Resilience so that when we are faced with such a case in future, we have enough food to feed our people. And that includes irrigation farming, Reverend Banda, includes water harvest, of course, for irrigation, but also better farming methods so we can produce more in a limited piece of land that we have. One hectare should give us more food than ever before, not once, but twice a year because of irrigation. So we want to work with the church. We invite the church, the RCZ, to work with this government and other churches to continue working with this government. And really, partnership is the way to do it. Friction, disunity, really shouting over each other is not the way we resolve problems. It's not the way we work together to save the people in times like this. And thank you for mentioning that droughts are not an instigation of an individual, whether that individual is a leader in politics, in government, in the church, or otherwise. The children of Israel experienced droughts, hunger in those days, but they always worked together. God gathered them together so they could protect the vulnerable during such times. We also know as Christians that God will never give us a burden we cannot carry. He has given you the burden to run the Reformed Church of Zambia. God knows you are equal to the task. He will be there to support you to continue running this church. We also know that God has allowed us to run this country under these difficult times because he will be with us to carry through these difficulties until we get better times ahead of us. So thank you for working with this government in the drought relief, particularly I've been reminded in the areas of Chadiza and Chama, the Reformed Church in Zambia is working with the government and the DMMU and the whole disaster and emergency team to help deliver food to the needy in these locations. Please expand your coverage, and I've already talked to the Secretary of the Cabinet to have a meeting with your leadership after um, we are through with our celebrations. Of course, give you today, maybe Monday, reach you out so we can see which other areas you can help deliver the food where it's needed for our people. I must confess, as a church member myself, that the churches are much closer to particular and certain communities in our country. And we must take advantage of that as we deliver support to our people. I could have said more, but it's not necessary. Let me simply say, we ask the church, the Reformed Church of Zambia, to continue uniting our people. I heard your message loud and clear. I heard your message as I, said, as I sat there. You can take it that your message is taken in, and we will do our part to reach out to our colleagues, including ECL himself, so that we can talk to you. Our upbringing is very clear. On the platform of love, on the platform of unity, on the platform of tolerance, not violence, we can achieve a lot. On the platform of mutual respect, we can achieve a lot. Conflict does not help anyone in society, in our country, in our, con in our countries elsewhere. I say our countries because the border of trust is one, the global community is one. We have seen what's happening in other countries. We don't want Zambia to go in that direction. No leader must visualize the Zambia where there is smoke in Cairo Road, where there is smoke in Chipata, in Navutica market. No, that is not our role. Our role is to be able to get our people to go through even the most difficult times in peace, in love, extending our hand to each other. And I think this is important. And I know why you raise this matter. I do understand the psychology around why you raise this matter under this church. <laughs> so you can count on us. You can count on us. 
we count on you to do your bit. But what Zambia must always be is to be peaceful, is to be loving, is to respect the rule of law so we can all coexist unity and diversity and reaching out to each other, as I've said, is very, very important. Reverend, I want to end by saying once more, we congratulate the Reformed Church of Zambia celebrating 125 years of existence in our country. 1899, as the play was going on the floor of this ground, and the music that was sung from 1899, from 1899 to 2024, 125 years. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> we wish the church continuity we wish the church more success. We wish the church more support to those that I need in our communities. God bless the Reformed Church in Zambia. God bless our country, Zambia. I thank you for your kind attention.